this presentation, the question I'm asking is, physically, what is this thing we call time? Most scientists believe time to be an integral part of the universal fabric. Some believe it's a human construct, a falling tree in the forest. In other words, it doesn't exist unless we exist. The newest idea is that time is entropy. Newton saw time as being absolute. To him, and most of us, time flows at a fixed constant rate from past to future. Heat was also seen as a fluid, a caloric flowing from hot to cold. Today, scientists see time as being part of a thing called space-time. In other words, space itself has three dimension and time is the fourth dimension of it. And the universe travels through time at a constant velocity, which is the speed of light, no acceleration. Locally, the unfolding of time depends on velocity and or proximity to mass. The faster something moves, slower time flows. The closer something is to mass, slower time flows. Since mass is a local phenomenon, while gravity surrounds all masses and extends to infinity, we attribute the effect of gravity, not mass, to time. But why does mass or gravity slows time and why does velocity affect time? At this point, it may be a good idea to look at this presentation on gravity. Einstein created a thing called special theory of relativity that dealt with speed of light, space time, mass, energy. Minkowski interpreted this theory in geometric terms you move through space and time simultaneously. In other words, you're standing here watching a presentation. You are moving through time at the speed of light in this direction. If you're in a car, an airplane, rocket ship, whatever, and you're moving through space, you're also moving through time. So it's not a straight line anymore going upwards. The line bends. And the faster you're going, the more it bends until, of course, it moves, you're moving at the speed of light, in which case you're going as fast as you possibly can, but time stops for you. At the time, Einstein objected to Minkowski's interpretation of space-time as a four-dimensional fabric, but he quickly relented because Minkowski was famous and he was not. What I would like to do is propose a different interpretation of space-time using a modern appliance. A TV screen is composed of pixels. It has a set number of pixels per square inch, the screen's pixel density. The pixel density is usually called dots per inch, DPI. Now, this is only an analogy, keep that in mind. Imagine you have a TV screen that can be stretched forever in two dimensions with four requirements. Number one, it can't rip. Number two, the pixels must not enlarge. Number three, the pixel density, the dots per inch, must stay constant. And the pixels are dark, they're not lit. So, if you stretch the screen, well, number one, it doesn't rip. Since pixels can't enlarge, stretching the screen would lower the pixel density, but the pixel's density can't change. Therefore, new pixels must be created. And while these pixels are being created, the new pixels momentarily flash, then go dark. Let's call the flashing new pixels axions. Ah, it's an analogy, keep that in mind. Stretching the screen for a moment creates axions simultaneously throughout the screen. It's using the energy that stretches the screen. Being identical, 
axions create identical light instantly throughout the entire screen. So for a moment, the entire screen flashes and goes dark. But if the screen is expanded constantly, the entire screen creates axions and appear to be constantly lit. So let's apply this analogy to our universe. Universal expansion enlarges the universe by continuously and constantly creating space-time everywhere simultaneously. Now, the axioms in the TV analogy are space-time pixels being created, and the dark pixels are equivalent to space pixels that remain after time moments have elapsed. So space-time in this interpretation, space-time is a momentary physical entity created by universal expansion. During space-time creation, time flashes for a moment of Planck time, then vanishes. But the space portion of space-time remains and enlarges the universe. So time is a momentary field created simultaneously with space. So now here's our analogy, space-time. What it is is two blocks, one to prevent you from seeing and the other one to block the bead. And here's a front view of the same thing. To be identical, this bead will be back here. So now the top view of an electron behind a block before the electric field pushes it toward the left. In other words, you create an electric field here. The electric field is going to push the electrons sideways. So, but as the electron is moving, it creates a magnetic field around it. So if you're standing in front of it, you're seeing an electron appear in the space. And simultaneously with the electron appearance, a magnetic field appears and disappears instantly. Well, space-time is basically, space is basically these two blocks together. As the universal expansion moves them apart, space-time is created between them. And that space-time has with it, associated with it, a time, a moment of time, and that flashes out. So the universe is expanding at the speed of light, and this is considered debatable right now. This expansion must stretch the fabric of the universe, whether you consider it to be quantum fields or dark matter or the ether, whatever you want to call it. This stretching and space-time creation began after the inflation period, after the Big Bang. And apart from, apart from enlarging, space hasn't changed since time began. The implication is that the universe maintains the density of this fabric constant. Since gravity affects time, away from gravity, time creation must be a constant. Therefore, space-time creation must also be constant, which cycles back to the understanding that universal expansion is constant. Now stay with me. This is a tough one. Constancy has a limit. Energy condenses space pixels. At low energy, we call this condensed space pixels photons. At high energy, pixels and energy become intertwined into mass, into matter. And every bit of mass is surrounded by a higher space, space pixel density. So as atoms gather together, the number of space pixels around the atom increases. Therefore, larger bodies have a higher space pixel density around them. Normally, with the technology we have, we can't measure this. But if you go to astronomical bodies, stars and planets and galaxies, the area, the volume around these bodies has a very high pixel density. The high density prevents universal expansion from stretching that area, the volume, as easily. 
therefore less axions are created around astronomical bodies. And as the mass of these bodies increases, less space-time, less axions can be created. Less space-time means less time. Hence, around large bodies, time dilates, time slows down. So let's look around the Earth for a moment, okay? Approaching the Earth, time slows down slightly compared to the space above it. Therefore, the creation of space-time must decrease. This is known. GPS operators have to account for the time dilation caused by gravity as well as the satellite's orbital velocity. Problem is, the slowing down of time doesn't stop on the Earth's surface, but continues to the Earth's core. Why? So here's a graph. As you get closer to the Earth, the acceleration of gravity increases and gravity and the time slows down. And that's the surface of the Earth. But if you are past the surface of the Earth to go into the Earth itself, time continues slowing down. Here's the problem. This is a graph of the, the uh, gravity acceleration as you approach the Earth. As you get closer and closer, the acceleration of gravity increases until you get to the surface. At the surface, the acceleration of gravity decreases. By the time you get to the center of the Earth, the acceleration of gravity is zero. So look at the two graphs together now. As one goes up, time goes down. Until we get to the surface of the Earth. From then on, both the acceleration of gravity and time go down, decrease. So, as you approach the Earth's core, gravity's acceleration decreases. Does that mean gravity decreases also? As you go down toward the Earth's core, time keeps decreasing. Does it mean the Earth's mass is increasing? Since mass is not increasing, what is increasing? Well, what's increasing is the density of space pixels inside the Earth. I call these space pixels dark matter. Universal expansion proceeds at the speed of light. You might want to debate that part. One of the things I believe in is that nothing moves under its own power. Universal expansion moves everything. So if you apply a force to an object, you're creating motion. You make the object move. When the force stops, universal expansion continues moving the object at the same speed and in the same direction. I call this property, we call this property of mass, inertia. Light, or any electromagnetic energy, doesn't have mass, therefore it doesn't have inertia. So as soon as light is created, universal expansion carries it at the speed of the universal expansion. At that speed, light travels in the same moment. There are no actions being created. Now, all moving objects move through space-time, through axions. Depending on their velocity, they move through more or less space-time, more or less axions. For objects moving at the speed of light, they travel in the same space-time moment. That's called time dilation because of velocity. Since time is a field created by universal expansion, moment by moment, neither the past nor the future can exist. Therefore, time travel, as understood by science fiction, is impossible. Einstein is being quoted as saying, 
for those of us who believe in physics, the distinction between past, present, and future is a stubbornly persistent illusion created by memory and record keeping. That's my addition. So, in summary, space-time is created by universal expansion constantly everywhere. Time is a field that separates from space soon after the creation of space-time. Around astronomical bodies, space is denser, hindering the creation of space-time. This leads to time dilation. As mass moves through space-time, it cuts across time fields. Increasing the speed decreases the time fields encountered. Time dilation. One is for gravity, the other one is for velocity. 